Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars, and today we're gonna to be looking at the Olight Valkyrie PL2RL. Now, what all that means is it's the same Olight Valkyrie that boasts the 1200 lumen brightest in the industry weapon light, but now they've integrated this awesome laser sight right underneath it. So this is an advanced unit that I got for testing and review, but by the time you guys are watching this video, it is made available to the public. There is a link in the description. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this Olight Valkyrie RF. Olight reached out to me after they saw my review of the PL Mini Valkyrie, which was a weapon light that I really liked. There was a lot to like about that light. But they reached out to me because they were like, Dan, you gotta try out this new flagship weapon light laser combo that we're gonna be releasing. I really think that you're gonna like it. So I went ahead and said yes, of course, cause I'm like, yeah, free laser flashlight, why not? So Olight sent this thing to me and I've had this thing for a couple of weeks and I've really put it through the ring you're testing it. And there's a lot to like about it. One thing that I know about Olight is that their designs are really well thought out. They think of everything when they're putting these things together. So I'll just go ahead and run you through a few things that I think are really cool. While this flashlight is a 1200 lumen flashlight, which is extremely bright, they realize that brighter isn't always better for every scenario. There are some times where a dimmer light is more helpful, specifically indoors, close quarters at night, after your eyes have already adjusted to the darkness, Turning on 1200 lumens will blind you and your assailant just as much. So they built in an option for you to be able to run the unit at 400 lumens. So if you have it on, you can double click the on button and that'll knock it down to a much more manageable 400 lumens, which is much better for indoor close quarters. How this thing attaches to the gun is awesome, okay? It's just got a quick release, but it's a spring loaded quick release. So if you push it in like this, then you can slide it on your gun's tactical rail and then just throw the lever and you are good to go and it's locked down tight. So it just holds zero really well. Every time I take it off, see how easily it comes off. I can slide it right back on, click it down and maintains it zero perfectly. So the quick release lockup feature is really well designed, really thought out as well as where the activation buttons are. Now this is completely ambidextrous for right-handed and left-handed shooters and you can activate it without adjusting your shooting grip. So if your shooting grip looks like this, you can activate it just like that. Another cool feature is that you don't have to just click it once and leave it on. You can actually just hold it down and it becomes a monetary switch. So having a monetary switch like that, just like I mentioned in my PL Mini review, it's awesome if you need to pop it on, duck for cover, change your position, pop it on, duck for cover, change your position super helpful and you can do it all without having to change your grip. If you really want to disorient your assailant, you can click both buttons at once and that'll click on a strobing feature, okay? Very cool feature, really good for disorienting an assailant. On the bottom, there is a little throw switch and what that does is that allows you to run the laser or the flashlight independent of each other or both together. So for example, if you want the laser only on, you have that right there, or you can flip it to do just the flashlight or both, which you can't actually see that I'm doing right here, but they are both on, I promise. Speaking of the laser, it is a class 3R 5 milliwatt laser, which I could be mistaken, but I believe that means it is the brightest laser legal in the US. And it is very bright. It's suitable for all indoor applications, as well as outdoors in dusk or dawn, nighttime, or even in full sun, as long as your target is in the shade, the dot will still show up just fine. However, when you're looking at a target in full sunlight, for my eyes, the dot disappeared at anything beyond about 10 feet, unfortunately. Now, like I said, that's probably as good as it gets for a weapon mounted laser, especially since they are hitting the ceiling of what is legal. So I wouldn't dock it too much for that. Like I said, for anything indoor or at night, this thing is plenty bright. When you buy this thing, it does come with both CR123A batteries and it comes with a tool for adjusting the laser sight as well as removing the internal rail mount, which allows you to change between a standard 1913 Picatinny rail mount or the Glock mount. So if you're a Glock guy, it does come with a Glock specific attachment. Now to fully test the laser sight on it, I took it to my local indoor gun range. 
This place is called Prescott Gun Club and it is the best gun range in town. If you guys live in the Prescott Quad City areas, you definitely need to be checking out Prescott Gun Club. The owners, Don and Elizabeth, are just some of the best people you will ever meet in your entire life. So I would actually even say that if you live in the Phoenix or Flagstaff, Sedona area, it's worth the drive to come check out the range. It's a state-of-the-art facility and like I said, the owners are some of the coolest people in the world. So I'm not officially affiliated or endorsed by them, but they do let me use their range sometimes to film these reviews and I super appreciate it. Sighting in the laser sight was super easy. I just lined up the laser with the iron sights of my handgun and I was good to go. So I fired off a few boxes of ammo, testing this thing out both from a rested on the bench position and offhand position. And I was just trying to see if the recoil caused any failures whatsoever, if it caused the laser to start drifting up or down or one way or the other, or if it caused the flashlight to flicker or go out or for anything to knock loose. And everything was working just as planned and I was shooting nice tight groups. And just for kicks, to really test the durability of this thing, I went ahead and mounted it up on this AR-12 style 12 gauge shotgun that I have for review for a different day. But I was sighting it in that day at the range and I was using some 12 gauge slugs and 12 gauge Magnum double lot buck as well as regular double lot buck. And I figured, if I'm gonna find any failures or faults with this light, it's gonna be shooting 12 gauge slugs or Magnum buckshot. So as I was shooting and adjusting the iron sights on this thing, I went ahead and just left the laser and flashlight on. I wasn't actually using the laser sight. I didn't wanna re-zero it for this gun. I wanted to leave it zeroed for the other handgun so I could test it again when I was done. And as I was shooting this thing, I did not notice any flickers or issues with the flashlight or the laser. They were just staying on constantly the way they're supposed to. So it seemed to be holding up just fine to the recoil of 12 gauge slugs and magnum buckshot. So I took it straight off of this rifle and put it back on the handgun. And I just love how easily this thing detaches. You can see how easily it just clicks right back on. So basically I just did that right there. I pulled it off the shotgun, put it straight on the handgun and looked down the sights and the laser to my surprise was still completely zeroed with where I had it before lined up with the iron sights. So I went ahead and took a five shot group with it just to see if it did in fact maintain good zero and if I didn't knock anything loose. So I was looking for the bolt holes to kind of stray to one side or the other or up and down. And to my surprise, with the exception of just one flyer up there in the corner, I did put four shots through the same hole at 15 yards with using the laser sight. So if that doesn't hold up to recoil, then I don't know what does. I was seriously impressed that I didn't even have to re-zero it. So that's testimony to how well this thing locks up onto a tactical rail, as well as how durable it is that it can hold up to 12 gauge slugs and Magnum buckshot without any issues. So that was five rounds of slugs, 10 rounds of Magnum double op buck and 10 more rounds of regular two and three quarter inch double op buck shot. Not to mention a few boxes of nine millimeter. This thing is still running strong. The flashlight and the laser are still super bright despite being used for a couple hours at the range. Now let's take a look at some real world applications of the flashlight itself. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some footage of my last video of the PL Mini so you can compare the 400 lumen settings and you can actually see the wide throw of the PL Mini versus the narrow long distance throw of the full size Valkyrie. Here we are in my living room, and this is the Valkyrie PL Mini. This is the one that I reviewed a couple months ago. It's a 400 lumen flashlight, and it's got a nice wide throw. It's great for these indoor low light applications. The distance to that front door is about eight yards. Now let's have a look at my new full-size Valkyrie with the laser. This is the 400 lumen setting, and it feels a bit brighter, but that's just because the beam is a lot more focused on this light. So now I'm gonna click it over to the 1200 lumen setting and holy cow, that is so bright. Um, it is blinding when you look at something white like my door, all the detail gets washed out. It basically turns into a light source of itself. So it's a little bit too bright for these indoor low light applications. Here they are together again for your reference. This is on the 400 lumen setting and then now the 1200 lumen setting. Holy cow, it is so bright, it is blinding. It's probably not good to run it indoors on this setting. So let's take it outdoors and have a look. So here we are just looking at my backyard playground equipment. The close side of that playground equipment is five yards, the slide is 10 yards, and the shed is 20 yards. That's the Valkyrie PL Mini. Here's the full size Valkyrie. And as you can see, 
even on the 400 lumen setting, it feels a lot brighter. That's because, again, it's a more focused light. So clicking it onto 1200 lumens and it just lights up this playground equipment like it's Christmas. It is basically like shining the sun on your object. And out there in my shed at 20 yards is light up perfectly still. And you can't actually see it with the camera, but I could see with my eyes my neighbor's house. And you can see the laser over there dancing on my neighbor's house, which is about 120 to maybe 150 yards away. Now, I could faintly see it with my own eyes, but the camera's not really picking it up. This light boasts that it can throw light 235 meters. That's probably a stretch because again, with my eyes, I could only see out to about 100 yards, 120 yards. But in these outdoor applications, it certainly puts the PL Mini to shame. So if you're looking for a light that you can use outdoors as well, this is a much better option. So like I've been saying, Olight really thinks this stuff through. They really have an ergonomic mindset when they're designing their lights. And not only that, I don't think that Surefire and Streamlight can really touch it because they not only don't offer a 1200 lumen option, but Surefire's closest thing, a 1000 lumen option, doesn't come with a laser and retails for $299, whereas this one only retails for 129. At 129, I think it's a pretty good deal, but this Sunday, October 28th, to mark the launch of this product, they are gonna be offering a flash sale on this exact weapon light with a 35% off savings, which knocks off $45 off the price. So you can pick up one of these for about $85 or less this Sunday, October 28th, if you are interested in it. Now, with all those positive things being said, I do have a couple of criticisms of this weapon light. And these are things that I've already mentioned to my Olight rep that I would like to see changed on future models. And basically these two criticisms stem from the fact that the Olight PL Mini was designed so well. So if you recall from my review of the Olight Light PL Mini, and if you haven't seen it, go ahead and click the iCard to that video and watch it. But one of the coolest features about it is that it has a rechargeable lithium battery built into it, whereas this one runs on the CR123A batteries. Now, the CR123A, while it is a typical weapon battery, they aren't exactly batteries that you have on hand in your junk drawer. So when they run out, you have to special order them online. And the cool thing about the PL Mini being rechargeable was not only the fact that it was rechargeable, but because it had a magnetic charging base that you could actually charge it while it's inside your bedside safe and that was a really cool feature that I am really missing on this new light. The other feature that I'm missing is the PL Mini's activation switch is a downward motion to activate. So I push my thumb down to activate it like that and I found that when I do that not only am I not changing my shooting grip but I'm not moving the muzzle of my gun very much. The full size Valkyrie you actually have to push in. So instead of pushing down I'm pushing it inward toward the barrel. Now, while I don't have to adjust my grip and I can still adjust it just fine, you can notice how when I do that, the tendency is for my muzzle to push over to the right a little bit. So that was one thing that I noticed when I was firing this thing as a monetary switch is that I would line up my aim and when I turned it on, I would knock off my point of aim. Now you guys might be thinking that I'm just being really nitpicky, but those things actually matter to me. And so while this will replace the PL Mini as my bedside nightlight, when the batteries run out, I'm probably gonna go back to using my Mini Valkyrie just for the fact that I can keep it charged all the time without a shadow of a doubt in my gun safe, which is awesome. Now they did hear my feedback for the PL Mini when I said that they needed to add the strobe feature and they did for this one. And I think the way you activate it is easy enough. So. Definitely props to Olight for hearing my feedback on the PL Mini Valkyrie and adding the strobe feature to the full-size Valkyrie. I super appreciate you guys for hearing me on that. Now you guys tell me, do you know of any laser flashlight combos that are going to be a better value than the Olight PL2RL? Let me know in the comments because if there is something out there that you think is a better value, I would love to get my hands on it and test and review it side by side with this. So please let me know in the comments and then please subscribe so that you can see those videos as well as my full length review video of this Panzer AR-12 that will be coming your way shortly. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars. Thanks so much for watching.